Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be here at uh, SitesCon. So thanks to the organizers for uh, this opportunity. Uh, my name is uh, Muhammad Bakli. I am a big data researcher and developer at the MobilityDB team. Uh, MobilityDB is a special temporal uh, database system developed by our research team in the Free University of Brussels in Belgium. And this is my talk about how it integrates with CITOS to support big special temporal data, data that it changes over time. First, I'm gonna give a brief intro about MobilityDB, what type of data it supports, how to load data into MobilityDB, and how to install MobilityDB with sites. Then I will give a demo about distributing data and the queries on an Azure cluster. And during the demo, I will execute uh, some of the uh, user queries. Finally, I will talk about um, uh, some of the special temporal uh, data partitioning uh, challenges. So what is MobilityDB? MobilityDB is an open source special temporal uh, data management uh, extension for Postgres and uh, PostGIS. Postgres is an extensible uh, database system. It supports uh, the primitive types uh, like numbers, text, and also some other advanced types like XML and JSON. It has indices that make sense for those types. They are used for fast random access and joins. And it has a variety of operations that are exposed in SQL. It also includes a query optimizer that provides uh, cost-based optimizations, as well as a statistics collection and selectivity estimation functions uh, for the data types it supports. So besides the primitive types, uh, PostGIS extension adds the geometry and the geography types to the PostGIS database. It extends the GIST, SCP GIST, and the brain indices to speed up the searching uh, by organizing data into a generalized search tree. It provides a comprehensive special processing API that understands those types, and it integrates well with the SQL query optimizer by providing the selectivity-based uh, estimation functions for its types. Then MobilityDB comes as an extension of both systems to support data that it changes over time. We call it special temporal data. It extends the type systems by types, including uh, temporal special types, like uh, temporal geometry point and temporal geography point. These types are used to represent the changes in the movement of an object over time, like a moving car, a moving person, moving airplane, etc. Besides, uh, it supports other uh, temporal types uh, uh, for the base types, like uh, temporal end, temporal float, temporal text, and temporal boolean. For instance, the T float can be used to represent uh, temperature that it changes over time, speed of a vehicle that it changes over time, and so on. MobilityDB extends the GIST and the SCB GIST to index the spatial temporal data and to provide uh, fast spatial temporal uh, joints. It has functions that understand uh, those types, including uh, trajectory processing, temporal properties, lifted predicates, and temporal aggregations. Finally, it integrates with the SQL query optimizer by providing the selectivity estimation functions for the temporal types. Because MobilityDB is an extension uh, for Postgres, it works well with the ecosystems of Postgres. So we have tested all the tools included in this slide, and during this talk, we will see how it integrates with CITOS to support a distributed special temporal uh, queries. MobilityDB is an open source uh, project, and uh, it is available uh, on GitHub. It is also a community project in the open source uh, Geospatial Foundation OSTG. So how to install uh, MobilityDB? To install MobilityDB on a single node, you can compile it from source as follows. Clone uh, the project from our GitHub uh, repository and follow uh, the next instructions to uh, compile uh, it. And then run as a command create extension uh, MobilityDB cascade, which adds postages and MobilityDB to your uh, Postgres database. 
to install Mobility DB uh, with Citus on Microsoft Azure, we provide a repository where, with all the information needed for doing the installation. So you just need to clone the repository and run a bash script called deploy cluster, which will then create a cluster with the configuration parameters mentioned here, the number of worker nodes, the location, the virtual machine size, etc. So let's talk about uh, what is the special temporal data looks like and how to load data uh, into MobilityDB. This table shows uh, snippet data from Toyota Motors uh, Europe, and they get uh, 10 readings actually per second. Each reading uh, represents 2,000 signals. And here we only show a subset of them. Each reading uh, contains a timestamp and uh, some static attributes that don't change uh, during the trip, like trip ID, driver gender, driver age. Uh, there are some uh, slowly changing attributes like uh, the moving state. Uh, one means the moving, one means uh, zero means the stop. So besides, there are uh, some uh, dynamic attributes like uh, SCB1, which represents the speed that it changes over time. MobilityDB collects the timestamp with each signal and construct a function. For example, uh, the figure shown here, we use the temporal um, integer to represent the moving state signal. So the vehicle was not moving for a specific time uh, period, and then it started to move for some other time period, and then it stopped again. So the slowly changing uh, signals uh, will get highly compressed. The continuous changing signals like speed uh, will be represented as the temporal float, which is a different kind of function. So using the given data, the compression rate is 450%, lossless compression without losing uh, any data, just by converting data from the flat representation into the compact representation. In the flat representation, each trip has 16,000 uh, uh, records, and but in mobility DB, uh, each trip is represented as one record with all the signals uh, included. So in this example, we reduced the size from 165 megabyte into 337 megabyte, and from 1.6 million rows into 100 uh, rows. This slide uh, shows uh, how to construct a trajectory from discrete observations. So the query selects from the input table, which contains the input data, and it constructs for uh, every pair of uh, position and timestamp a uh, temporal geometry point. That's a mobility DB type, which represents one special temporal uh, point. And then we'll aggregate uh, these instances into a postgres array ordered by time, and from this array, we construct uh, a temporal uh, geometry uh, sequence. This is a type for uh, a continuous trajectory. So the query uh, groups the data per vehicle day uh, sequence. So every vehicle has many trips uh, over many days. And in one day, it might have uh, multiple trips, uh, for example, going to work uh, and back to home. And this is uh, an example use case uh, from the public transport company in Moscow, where they migrated from the point-based uh, representation in postages into mobility DB, achieving a reduction of 10 billion rows a day into 15,000 rows a day, and from 500 uh, megabyte per day and 300 gigabyte per year into 5 megabyte per day and 2 gigabyte per year. The next part is about how to distribute mobility DB on a cluster of nodes. This figure shows the distribution architecture where uh, the distribution for uh, the database is achieved uh, using Citus. Uh, as shown here, all nodes uh, have the same stack that consists of uh, Postgres, Postgres, Mobility DB, and Citus. The MobilityDB user will write the same query, uh, SQL query, as in uh, a single node, and Citus will then uh, build a distributed uh, query plan uh, that executes the query on the worker nodes. Uh, 
Cytos can distribute uh, most of the special temporal queries, except the queries that require uh, data reshuffling. We will talk about uh, it later in the next slides. So because of mobility DB and CITOS are not a fork, uh, they are integrated well, uh, which allows us to leverage the new features of CITOS uh, to distribute uh, most of the queries very efficiently and out of the box. For the demo, I have prepared uh, this database on uh, an Azure cluster. We have a table input, which has uh, a list of uh, timestamps and positions and another table called uh, trips uh, where uh, we construct uh, mobility DB trajectories uh, from the discrete point uh, stored uh, discrete points stored in the input table and the special temporal trajectory is represented uh, by the type uh, tgm point which is colored in orange and we have uh, two uh, lookup tables the municipalities of Brussels table and also the point of interest table that contains some landmarks in uh, Brussels So which tables should be distributed and which should not? We distribute the table that contains uh, the trip's information using the trip identifier or the vehicle identifier. Actually, the default partitioning method in CITOS is the hash method. This is not a special temporal uh, partitioning, but it works well in most of the queries that are executed without the need uh, for uh, data reshuffling. And data reshuffling typically occurs with special temporal joins between distributed tables. So uh, to support this kind of queries, there is an ongoing work between the Mobility DB team and uh, Marcus Lott and Nils Dyke from the Cytos team. So here, after we apply the create distributed uh, table function of Cytos, the trips gets distributed uh, into uh, multiple shards that are stored on the worker nodes. And for small tables like municipalities, we copy them in each worker node using the function create reference table. So we can join them with the distributed charts of uh, the trips table. This data is the simulated data coming from the Berlin mod generator, which is implemented in Mobility DB. Berlin mod is a benchmark made by Kristen, Thomas, and Ralph Gooting, and we implemented it in Mobility DB. It is basically simulates the movement of a vehicles in uh, a city. So each vehicle makes a trip uh, from home to work in the morning, from work to home in the afternoon, and some leisure trips in the evenings and weekends. This slide shows the demo specs, the data set size I used, and Azure cluster, and the link for a SQL script that I prepared to partition the data and perform some queries. So now let's switch to the demo part to answer some of the special temporal questions. We will connect to the server, the coordinator node. So the first question here is uh, just to show you uh, the total number of uh, trips and total number of points in the trips table. Uh, the count uh, function here uh, will count will return the total number of uh, trips uh, in the table, and the num instance uh, function will uh, return the number of special temporal points uh, per trip, and then the sum function will return the total number of points for all trips. Let's run it. So here we go. We have uh, 44, uh, south, uh, 44 million special temporal points that form uh, 35, actually, thousand uh, trajectories. The next question says which vehicle trips took place during a specific time frame. This kind of queries is called a temporal uh, range query as we have a time frame uh, to filter the data on. So here we use the operator uh, double inverse AND uh, to uh, check the temporal overlapping between trips and the given time period. Let's run it. So here are the results. So these numbers represent the vehicle identifiers. And we can also apply uh, some trajectory operations on the data, like the driven distance by these vehicles. For this, we will use uh, the lens operation, 
to and we will add it to the select clause. So just by type length and the, add the trip column as an argument here, and it will return the driven distance in meters. We could divide it by thousand to get it in um, kilometer. So as you can see, the first vehicle made a trip for 8.6 kilometers. We can also calculate the speed of uh, the vehicle as um, every time stamp during the, at every time stamp during the trip. Uh, this is simply by uh, adding the speed function to the query. So we just add the speed function on the trip. And this function actually, uh, this function is calculates the, um, the speed at every time step. And the type of this function will be tfloat. So let's try also to check the query plan to make sure that the special temporal indices work. So as shown here, uh, the SP just index uh, was used on the trip column for the local charts to speed up the searching actually by pruning data that is not in the given time frame. And this was uh, one of the tasks that was executed uh, on uh, worker one. So the next question is to find out which vehicles uh, passed in the municipality of Aver. This is a special range uh, query. We have uh, another table called uh, municipalities, and uh, which actually was uh, replicated on the worker nodes. In this query, instead of checking only the overlapping, um, we also verify the special intersection uh, between each uh, trip and the geometry of Ever. So this is done actually by running, by using the uh, predicate intersects. So this query will take some time uh, because, uh, and it will, return all, it will return also many values because it doesn't make sense to only use a special intersection uh, and it should be a special temporal intersection. So it's a rare case where you search uh, in the space without uh, filtering data by time. And this will take us to the next query, which is a special temporal uh, range query. So here we use the special, we use both special and temporal ranges for verifying the intersection. The only change here is by adding the add period uh, function that returns the part of the trip that overlaps with the given time period. And then the function uh, intersects will be used to uh, verify the intersection uh, between this part of the trip and the geometry of Ever. Let's run it. So here we go. As you can see, we got, we got only three vehicles. You can also uh, display the timestamp of, uh, I mean, the period for this trip just by taking add period and put it in the select clause. This will return a trip, the part of the trip that overlap uh, this uh, period. And then we can cast it to period. Then let's run it again. So as you can see, here, the first trip was made actually at 8, uh, 8 p.m. until uh, 8 p.m. three uh, minutes, and here uh, until 8 uh, p.m. Uh, 20, uh, 10 minutes, and so on. Next query is uh, a special uh, k-nearest neighbor query, where it returns the k-nearest um, uh, neighbors to a given uh, geometry. So for example, find the 10 nearest vehicles to uh, the grand uh, plus of Brussels. So we select the grand plus landmark from the points of interest uh, table, and we just use the distance operator 
defined here by this operator uh, in the order by clause uh, to um, actually uh, to order the trips based on their distance to the grand plus. And we take the first uh, 10 of them. So now let's go to the next query. The next query actually uh, is a special temporal uh, join query, which is not supported yet um, in uh, mobility DB and I mean in the distribution architecture with CITUS as the data in, uh, is uh, distributed by a non-special temporal uh, partitioning method. So a query example, find the pairs of trips that move close with respect to a distance uh, 50 meters. In this query, we need to uh, self-join uh, the trips table and the function d then will verify then the um, distance between the two vehicles at every timestamp. If it becomes less than uh, or equal to 50, then it should return true. So now let's switch back to the slides to see a real example uh, visualized on QGIS. So these are uh, two, uh, real two trajectories of two ships from the Danish Maritime Authority. So the query being visualized here detects uh, when the two ships will come close to each other in a near encounter scenario. In this part, I'm gonna show you some of the special temporal data partitioning challenges and proposed solutions based on the nature of the data. So we worked with three different uh, data sets, uh, Berlin Mod, uh, which is a synthetic data set, and the two real data sets, Taxi Caps uh, Trips in Roma, and EIS Ship uh, Trips, uh, which is provided by the Danish Maritime Authority. There are two proposed methods for partitioning. The first one is the hierarchical partitioning, where a two level of partitioning uh, is employed, a temporal one followed by a special one. So in the temporal uh, partitioning, the time extent of the table is split into equal-sized uh, intervals, for example, days, and for each day, a quad tree um, is employed to partition the data especially. This figure shows the temporal histogram of trips in four days in the Roma dataset. So the x-axis here represents the day hours in the four days, and the y-axis represents the number of overlapping trips in these hours. As you can see, the number of trips increases in the peak hours, and it decreases again in the um, during the midnight. For this case, we can cut the partitions at the time slots, which contains a less number of uh, overlapping trips. For trips that uh, overlap multiple uh, partitions, we replicate them uh, within each one. So the hierarchical partitioning is suitable for the Roma dataset and also for uh, the Berlin mod. Hierarchical partitioning works well when the data has some temporal dynasty patterns, for a more general case where uh, such a pattern cannot be assumed, multidimensional tiling can adapt more to the spatial temporal uh, distribution of the data. So as we can see here, one trajectory from the AIS uh, ship's dataset uh, can cover most of the dataset uh, area and uh, uh, interval. So multidimensional tiling is suitable as it partitions the data into um, disjoint uh, spatial temporal uh, tiles. Each partition here of these tiles uh, will then form a data partition for the distributed table. And this figure shows the temporal uh, distribution of the trips in the AIS uh, dataset during the day hours in four days. From this, we cannot determine actually where can we cut the temporal partitions. So our solution to this case is to segment the trajectory instead of replicating it in many tiles. So it's suitable for uh, the, the AIS uh, ship trajectory dataset. This was the end of my presentation. Thank you for listening, and please feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Thank you.